often opens ourselves to experience more God because we get out of our autopilot. Autopilot is the unconscious. Why do we believe what we believe? Why do we do what we do? What are the habits that control us? Really, right? Now, autopilot is not necessarily a bad thing. However, it keeps us asleep. You ever been driving down the road, you know, going to where you were going, and all of a sudden you got there and you don't remember getting there? <laughs> like all the time, right? So I used to call that my time travel. <laughs> and I thought it was a good thing until I started to wake up a little bit more. But wait, I was just completely unconscious. Now, there's nothing really wrong with being unconscious, except we want to wake up, do we? I mean, I think you want to wake up because you're here. I want to wake up. That's why I do the work I do. I want to wake up and make a more impactful impact on the world around me. I want to wake up and have a more conscious interaction with the life that I live. So we just got back, we were two weeks in Colorado, and we had a fabulous time. We had way, 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 way lots of family, which was wonderful. And um, full, let's say that. One of the things that um, we did, because we went to a, a wedding, my niece, got, my, my niece got married, and my niece is this young woman who is brilliant, and she's an event planner by training. And the events that she's been doing in her career the last few years have been these wine and food festivals all over the country with um, Martha, Martha Stewart. Stewart. I, my friend is Martha Creek, so I'm gonna say Martha <laughs> Creek. I'm like, that's not right, Martha Stewart. So she like plays big. She like plays phenomenal down to the details. So guess what her wedding was? Phenomenal down to the detail, down to the fact it was an outdoor wedding and the rains came, Colorado, northern Colorado, in July. Rains come every day. She had it planned. This girl said, My wedding's at five, it will not be raining at five on July 27th, a year ago. So the rains came in. Three o'clock, the sky goes completely dark. 3.15, here comes that black storm across that mountain range, right over to where she's going to be. We're like, oh no, jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez, or some variation of that, right? I think I was more nervous about the weather than she was. She had confidence. She said, no, it's going to be fine. The temperatures dropped like 20 degrees like they do in Colorado. It was beautiful after the storm. And then the sun came out and it raised at 30 degrees. But it dried it out. The field was dry, the chairs were dry, everything was dry. At five o'clock, she walks out of the house and across this big field and the sun is out and it's brilliant. It was beautiful. There's a power in putting things into action where you can hit autopilot where everything works like a smooth, smooth, smooth machine. But the autopilot I'm talking about today is when we go unconscious. So one of the things we did, we did lots of things in Colorado, but one of the things we did is we were in Colorado Springs for a few days. I spoke at the Unity Church there uh, last Sunday. Very wonderful experience. My sister lives in Colorado Springs. So um, we were driving from our campgrounds because we are RVers. We now have two complete road trips under our belt. So now we're pros, which only means that we can navigate all the problems <laughs> with greater ease, right? So we're driving, and I'm in simple directions. It's like six miles from where we're staying. And so it's like simple directions, and I'm driving, I'm driving, and all of a sudden, I'm lost. I'm like, this isn't right. And Rob's like, well, you took a wrong turn. I'm like, I did not. <laughs> I couldn't have taken the wrong turn. He goes, well, you probably just missed it. I'm like, I did not. You know how we do, right? We go defensive. And I'm like, wow, what in the world? So what ended up happening is the entire road turned because the road I was supposed to be on was closed, but I didn't see that it was closed. I just went, I was asleep. I went where the road went. I tried to follow my GPS and she was lying to me. So it was her fault, right? And then we turned around. 
on it, it's like you can't get on the highway there, you can't get on the highway there, you can't get on the highway there, we can't get on the highway there, I can't, can't get there. I can't get, we can't get Paul there, so we can't get there. She goes, oh, relax, you'll be fine. You can get there, just turn around. I said, turn around, I just turned around, right? Anyway, we got there. But, but I'm on the highway, because I kept her on the phone for the next 20 minutes. I go, okay, now where do I turn next? And now where I turn next? Because my GPS kept wanting me to get on the highway that was closed. Didn't work. But I went back because I thought, what in the world? Why was that so hard? So I went to her house again the next day, and I noticed what I did. And so I had to argue with um, the other people in my truck. Not going to say who that was. <laughs> I had to argue with the other people in my truck and say, I didn't miss it. I couldn't. I had to go that way because the road was closed. It didn't get me anywhere. It didn't even make me feel better. But I was on autopilot in making sure I wasn't wrong, right? Because I didn't want to be wrong because whatever, what we do. My point is we do this all day long, right? Instead of just staying awake and staying conscious. And so if the choice, and it becomes a choice, is to stay in our habituated patterns, habits of behavior, and even more than behavior, thought, right? Then we're gonna keep getting what we keep getting. Because from autopilot, from our habituated hardwired patterns, we're not gonna experience anything different. And yet we sit here and we go into our prayer in the morning, we go into our meditation in the morning, and go, I'm gonna be different today. I'm gonna be loved today. And then we step up from our chair and we go back into automated autopilot, which is less than love, maybe, for some of us. So the call is to be different. And I know you don't want to be different. I know you want the world to be different, but it's not going to happen until we be different. So we look at this, oh my gosh, this week. What a horrendous week we had in our country. Last week, I woke up, you know, I was dealing, thinking about, you know, the shooting, the first shooting and the second shooting, and then I woke up to the third shooting, all in a matter of three or four days. It's crazy, and then we had all those, all that stuff happening in Mississippi this week. It's horrendous. If it doesn't break your heart wide open, you've been habituated to the drama trauma of our world. We've been uh, numbed out by the events of our planet, but we are called, we, all of us, are called to wake up and to be different. Now, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do, right? What am I gonna do about El Paso? I can't do anything, except I can do everything. And what we're called to do is we're called to wake up and to lean in because what we want to do is lean away. What we want to do is drop away. What we want to do is close down. What we want to do is never go into another Walmart. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but we don't want to not do that because of fear, right? But what we're called to do is to stand in love no matter what. To wake up out of our habituated responses, which is for most of us to create more drama trauma in our minds because we watch the news over and over and over and over and over and over and then when we turn the news off it's in our brains over and over and over and if it's not the news it's the only thing it's that thing that's in your brain anyway right i call it the loopy mind and we get caught in that and it becomes habituated and it becomes automatic so why why is this true it's true because it's how our brains are wired Part of the limbic brain and so we actually get hardwired to react as opposed to respond we have to train ourselves to stand in love we have to train ourselves to interrupt the habituated pattern to interrupt the numbing out to interrupt the reactions that says this is horrible there's nothing i can do because the more that you stay there the more of the same you're going to get so it's not about out there, although out there can be an impulse, can be a trigger for us to wake up, to be the love that we say we are. 
to live in the oneness that we say we are. We are the spiritual, we are the center of spiritual oneness. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to be part of oneness? And we just passed, I don't know who in here knows about the Lion's Gate and, and the 8-8, eight, eight, um, the infinity and the opening to a new world. And, and um, we're at the close of that cycle right now. But what that gives us is an opportunity to really step into something new, to really make a commitment, to say, I'm, I'm here to wake up. I'm here to do my part, to make this planet a safe and loving planet. And does that mean you take on the big things? Not necessarily, but it does mean that you do something different in the small. So a friend of mine uh, put together a, a uh, conversation, an in interfaith, multi-faith conversation after the shooting last weekend. She organized it like in a day. And they had like 28 different organizations represented and they just said what's well, the conversation the conversation is to is to stay awake to stay conscious to stay connected to spirit and to take one small action one small action one woman that came out of that she goes you know what i am so in my autopilot i go to my same store i walk the aisles in the same way i say hello to the same cashier right i am she noticed she said what i'm going to do is I'm going to go to a different neighborhood every week. I'm going to go to a different Walmart every week. And I'm going to go in with my heart wide open. And I'm going to be in the presence of love, and I'm going to connect with whoever I see. And that connection can be as small as a slight smile. It can be as small as a gaze in the eyes. It can be anything that is conscious versus juxtaposed with unconscious and asleep. So I found this great video I want to share with you. It's a, of a little boy, and um, I'm just going to share it, and then I'll talk about it. So uh, maybe you can look at this. We end tonight with a little boy with enormous power, the power to lift spirits. Here's Steve Hartman, all <laughs> wrote. It is every kid's worst nightmare, and six-year-old Jaden Hayes has lived it ah! twice. First, he lost his dad when he was four. Then last month, his mom died unexpectedly in her sleep. I cried and I cried, I cried, and get her away. Then I couldn't sleep, and I cried, and I cried. Jaden is understandably heartbroken. Anybody can die, just anybody. But there's another side to his grief. A side he first made public a few weeks ago when he told his aunt and now guardian, Barbara DeCola, that he was sick and tired of seeing everyone sad all the time. And he had a plan to fix it. And that was the beginning of it. That's where the adventure began. <laughs> Jane asked his aunt Barbara to buy a bunch of little toys and bring them here to downtown Savannah, Georgia, near where he lived. <laughs> so he could then give them away. Thank you, man. What is it you're doing? Well, Trying to make people smile. Rubber duckies, dinosaurs. Because those are the things that make people smile. Yeah. And what happens to their face? Really? Really? You know what I mean right there? Jaden targets people who aren't already smiling and then turns their day around. Mm -hmm. He's gone out on four different occasions now and he's always successful. It's to make you smile. Even if sometimes he doesn't get exactly the reaction he was hoping for. It is just so overwhelming to some people that a six-year-old orphan would give away a toy expecting nothing in return except a smile. Oh. Of course, he is a handsome in hugs. And his aunt says these reactions have done wonders for Jaden. It's like sheer joy came out of this child. And the more people that he made smile, the more this watch. Jaden says that's mostly true. Mom, I'm so glad that my mom died. I bet you are. This is by no means a fix. But in the smiles he's made so far, nearly 500 at last count, Jaden has clearly found a purpose. I'm counting on it to meet 33,000. 33,000? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good goal. Mm -hmm. You think you can make it? Mm -hmm. I think you just did. Steve Hartman on the road.
in Savannah, Georgia. And that's the Now, if you're not smiling, there's something wrong with you, right? 33,000, you think that's possible? We want to see it again and again and again. So here's the thing. We're not on this earth to suffer and to struggle. And life happens. But we are on this planet, I believe, to find love, to be love, to be the impact. There we go. <laughs> you, can, you can Google that if you want to watch it again. It's, uh, it touched my heart when I saw it. But we are here. We are here actually to be happy. We are here to be loved. We are here to be joy. Jesus said that I come that your joy might be complete, that your life might be life abundance. Our master teachers of every path. Teach us that love is the way, that light is the way, but the way to get there is to go off autopilot and to wake up to the truth and to be the ones that we're waiting for and to be the ones we're waiting for or first be different inside. We be different inside by connecting to that which is spirit. Connecting, taking the moment, whether you have to go to Colorado, or you go lock yourself in your bedroom closet, it doesn't matter because spirit is everywhere. But to find spirit, you have to drop beneath your mind. You have to stop or interrupt the loopy automated pilot patterns, the autopilot patterns, and drop into that place in the center of your being. Feel your feet on the earth. Go hug a tree. Put your feet in some water. Do anything and anything that allows you to connect, not with the outer, but with the inner. And once you connect with that inner, let your heart be burst wide open because that's life on the planet. And once your heart is burst wide open, make a choice like that little six-year-old. Can you imagine a six-year-old who's lost both his parents say, I'm tired of everybody being sad. I'm going to do something about it. Now, if I'd have been smart, I'd have gone and found some little dinosaurs, but I wasn't that smart to do that this morning or <laughs> this morning or yesterday or last night. But think about that. Like, what can you do to bring a smile to your own face that then puts a smile on somebody else? What can you do to hold the kids of our planet, of our country, and those of other countries who are in this country? What can you do to hold your space, to hold your heart wide open in love? And it doesn't have to be a big action, because it's out of the small little things, like the little boy giving away little dinosaurs and rubber duckies, that a movement is made. But what if every person sitting in this room today and every person sitting in any type of new thought center today just opened our heart to our heart? Some song and some ohonopono and some forgiveness and some just holding the light. And so I'm joining with her. And um, I can post on our Facebook page the link to her work. But even if you're not linked to her work, what a difference that would make. What a difference that would make in your own heart, in your own life, just as that little boy then was lit up in joy as he was given joy. We can be lit up in love as we give love, as we stand for love. And standing for love is opening ourselves, opening our hearts, opening to a greater wisdom that is spirit right here and right now always and forever. When we turn off the autopilot, we have to wake up. When we interrupt the autopilot, we have gained access. Scientifically, we actually gain access to a greater degree of life force and there's a greater degree of love and light and 
infinite possibilities. When we turn off autopilot, we open our eyes and we go from tunnel vision to seeing with new eyes. Transforming, being transformed into new possibilities, new perspectives, new ways of being. And when we be different, not that there's anything wrong with being be, but when we go into our prayer and meditation with the intention of being more love and more connection and more purpose and more passion, then we do different. And the minute we flip into autopilot, we can notice it. We can notice it by paying attention to how our body feels. We can notice it in the way our anxiety shows up or our, that chronic thing that we have that, that is just simply an indicator shows up. And then we can stop. We go, where am I on autopilot? How can I wake up? How can I be connected to something new and different? The antidote to the familiar, which is autopilot, is the unknown. It's a place many of us don't like to be. But in the unknown is access to infinite possibilities for your own self, for your life, and for your world. So if you're willing to turn off the autopilot, what you will discover is more access to spirit, more love, more light, and more peace in the world. Will you do it? Will you join me? Yes. One, two, <laughs> okay, there we go, there we go. Okay, let me ask it again and let's let's hear it, right? If you're willing to turn off the autopilot in order to be more spirit, to be more love, to be more light on the planet, will you join me? If so, say yes! Yes! And so it is, and so I count on you. God bless you. Which is nice, I mean, it's fine. And you may agree with me after you hear me try to do this. 
But um, going out on the limb, I, I just uh, I think all the more listening to you that this is this is appropriate. Um, I only have two verses and I have the chorus, but um, I promise I'll, I'll fill out the rest of it. But um, in the spirit of not being on autopilot, I'll give this a shot. If your days are all the same And your nights are all to blame Flying on autopilot through dark skies Through the who, what, where's and why's Jump in and love Jump in and love, jump in and love. When you're stuck in the NUI, afraid to live, afraid to die. When you're not all you're cracked up to be, make the world a great big sea and jump in and love jump in and love jump in and love jump in and love How did I do? How did to give to this center, and I don't have it on a slide yet, but I'm very uh, pleased to announce that we now have online giving available, and it's through Tithely, so you can make your donation, even if you're not here, even if you're on Facebook Live, we'll have that um, nailed down by next week, and if you want to know more about it, it's in our email. So, our staying together. As I accept God's gift of everything to me, and I graciously share from my abundance and put into action the law of sharing and receiving. 